the only problem that we need to solve is basically finding the right amount of clusters. And for that, we're going to have to compute the model's inertia. And basically, that, that inertia is just the mean squared distance between the records and uh, their centroids. And therefore, we need to have a very low inertia, right? The lowest the inertia, the better, okay? Because that means the centroid is in, in, in its most perfect location, therefore minimizing, minimizing the, the mean squared distance. And by default, the, the, the algorithm actually runs an n number of times and then it actually keeps the model with that lowest mean squared distance, okay? So again, imagine if we would have a number of clusters equal to uh, the number of observations, that would mean the distance will be minimum. So theoretically, uh, you, you know, I was saying that, look, we need to, to have a very low inertia, but at one point, imagine we cannot have the same um, number of clusters as number of observations because we didn't solve any problem then. Basically, each observation would have its own category and we haven't solved any, any problem. So there is um, a very um, interesting way to actually find the optimal number of clusters. And the way we can do that is by using um, the elbow method. Okay, and let's do that. We're going to do that here. So what we're doing, we're going to go through a range of from one cluster to 20 clusters. And then we're going to fit the data with or for that specific amount of clusters. And then we're gonna, going to calculate the scores for, uh, for each model. And then we're going to plot it. And let's go ahead and run it. It's going to take a couple of seconds to do that. And look, here it is, right? So you see, with each new, um, new run, our inertia gets closer and closer to zero, right? So again, if we would have an equal, uh, th the same number of clusters as we have number of records, then the inertia will be actually zero. But that, that, would, that wouldn't solve a problem. So we need to choose the number of clusters with the elbow method. And with the elbow method, we plot the explained variation as a function of the number of clusters. And we're going to pick the elbow of the curve, basically this curve, as the number of clusters to use. And you can see here, the elbow is a little bit hard to define, okay? Another option to get the best number of clusters is to use the silhouette score. And that is from uh, scikit-learn metrics. And you can use that, but the, the challenge with the silhouette score is that, it, that it's quite a computationally expensive method. And therefore, we're going to stick to the elbow method for practical reasons. I mean, if you have time to, to run the silhouette score, that can be a, a better uh, way to choose the number of clusters, but it wouldn't make such a big difference to your problem. So for practical reasons, it's best to go with the elbow method. But if we would run this, right? And uh, let, let's see how long it takes. Look here, right? So here we've, we ran 20 iterations, okay, in 13 seconds. Now let's see how long it takes us with the silhouette score to run only one iteration. And it's going to take some time, so we're going to skip ahead. Right, so with the silhouette score, it took us a minute and 26 seconds for one iteration, while with the elbow method, it took us 15 seconds for 20 iterations. So that's a huge difference. So that's why I'm saying like for practical reasons, uh, it's best to actually use the elbow method. And how we select the number of clusters based on the elbow method is, is pretty straightforward. So for me, I choose it where the difference between the scores, each uh, uh, sequential score is smaller than the 90th percentile. So we're going to do this here and we get basically from 16 uh, clusters onwards, our um, difference between the score is lower than the 90th percentile of that. So let's check the first observations with 16 clusters. 
So we, we can see that our first observations cluster is seven, okay? I just want to quickly let you guys know that I have new videos coming out every week. So go ahead, subscribe to my channel and definitely stay up to date with what I post because I try to put a lot of content around machine learning, you know, both basic and advanced machine learning topics. I do a lot of exploratory data analysis and I go through different projects as well. So it's not just theoretical machine learning. It's also practical ways in which you can leverage machine learning to, to do real projects in the real world.